family and friends, at this time, it is time to begin these final homegoing services for Mr. McKay. If you do have friends and family who are not able to join us here today in person, please do let them know that we are now live on YouTube and on Facebook under Levy's Funeral Home. We are live on YouTube and Facebook under Levy's Funeral Home. Thank you. this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we're thankful that we each were blessed with good rest last night. And of course, protective rest and blessed and gifted with this day. So we come now, my beloved, as a faith community and faith to share and to celebrate the life of Brother McKay and Alfredo Sr. Certainly to his beloved wife and to the children, his siblings, the grandchildren. Again, we come and we greet you in Jesus' joy and we are grateful and we are thankful that we can worship the Lord. Gracious God, our fathers, in the name of Jesus, we come on this morning. We come giving thanks to you. Thanking you, O God, that you blessed us last evening with what was a good, sweet, and protective and revigorating rest. We thank you, O God, for the blessings and the gift of, of this day. And we are so grateful you continuously apply your grace upon each and every one of our lives. We bless your name now, merciful Father, for Brother McKay and his life, the lives of those of whom he touched. We thank you for how you sojourned with him in life. And as we gather this day in remembrance of him in celebrating his life, lifting this family, his beloved wife, his children, his siblings, and the family that is extended. And as we gather, we thank your Holy Spirit for how we know you will minister to them, how you will minister to them in this season. Cause them, even during this season of life, to be mindful of your wonderful, marvelous, and provocative promises of those of 
those who've lived and died in you. We thank you for the place of preparation that you made for us. And we thank you this day for receiving our beloved brother into your care. Thank you for your word. Your word this day that will lead us to life everlasting. Thank you for the privilege of worship. Once again, thank you for Brother McKay's Alfredo's life. We thank you for his kind expressions to so many, to his family and, and to those who have relationship with him. But most of all, oh God, we thank you for his relationship with you. And we thank you most promise of that relationship. We ask this prayer in your son Jesus' name and we're doing it this morning oh God with the forgiveness of all of our sins. Amen. And amen. I wish that um, you would allow me to lament some scriptures to you. Um, uh, our first reading is from the Old Covenant. It's from the book of Psalms. It is Psalm 116. And we're going to read Psalm 116, uh, stanzas 1 through 8. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy, because he turned his ear to me. I will call on the Lord as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearted. When I was in great need, the good Lord saved me. Be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to me. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Believe, therefore, I said, I'm greatly afflicted. How can I repay the Lord for all of his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation. And I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen. We now, beloved, share readings with you from Paul's letter to the church of Corinth. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, chapter 15 verse 13. If there be no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is our faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we testify about God that he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him. He did not raise him. If in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Jesus Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then our faith is futile. You are still, and we are still in our sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Jesus Christ, we are to be pitied more than As we 
continue in worship and taking note of our worship guide, uh, we will be then, we will now be ministered to in music by Brother Damien Washington. Damien.
never would have made it never could have made it without you I would have lost it all but now I see you're there for me Never would have made it Never would have made it Without you I would have lost it all But now I see You're there for me Cause I I'm stronger I'm wiser, I'm better, so much better. When I look back over my life, I knew you were there for me by my side. I say never. Hallelujah. Uh, I would have lost my mind. Oh, but you were there for me. Right on time, I never. Uh, yeah, I never. Yeah. Oh, you've been there for me. You've been there for me, and that's why I'm stronger. Anybody wiser, so much better. Yes, I'm better, yeah. Oh, 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 oh you've been my, my friend. You were there for me. All the way to the end, I'm stronger, I'm wiser, so much better, yeah, I'm better. Oh, I made it, said I made it, I made it, through the storm and the rain, through the sickness and pain. Never would have made it. Oh, never could have made it. Hallelujah, without you. Oh, uh. Beloved, we come and we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who died so that both you and I can experience a victorious, abundant, but more importantly, eternal life. Certainly to Sister Marie and to the family, um, the children, the siblings, the grandchildren, come to share words that will lead all of us to life everlasting. Um, and I'm not quite sure you're going to remember anything that I should say today. But that's all right. Very seldom a sermon is remembered. But I want to remind you on this morning this title to live is Christ. As we
we come here this morning, and as we gather, we each come with mixed emotions. There's the natural emotion of sadness as thoughts of continuing on in this life without Brother Alfredo as it sank in. The last year or so have been somewhat difficult for him. As difficult as, as is watching someone very dear to us struggle physically and then having to come and to say goodbye equally is quite difficult. So coming together this morning, we find ourselves filled with emotions. Mixed with the emotion of sadness, there's also a, there's also a sense of relief sense of peace and even joy to our beloved brother. Relief because Brother Alfredo no longer has to suffer physically anymore. To say the last year or so has been challenging for him would almost be an understatement. But he never let and allow his limitations to get the best of him. He continued to be faithful, and he was always optimistic. So, and then the last several years of life was quite a battle, especially as those of us in the family would watch his conditions to somewhat slow or deteriorate. But here on this morning, there is relief. Even though his relief causes us gathered and family gathered here, it causes pain and sorrow. There's also a sense of peace, my beloved. There's a sense of peace of Brother McKay's faith and his love for the Lord and his love for his beloved family. In the writings of Philippians, chapter 3, we read about Christians going to heaven to be with the Lord when they die. Knowing heaven is now a reality, beloved, for Brother McKay. Because it brings about a sense of peace for those of us who are here this morning. And I realize that it's never easy saying goodbye to someone that we really care about. But knowing with great confidence that Brother McKay is much better off today, as we know the word, than ever before, should bring peace to our hearts which also brings a sense of joy because heaven, my beloved, that which many of us dream of and hope for became a reality for him. Now heaven is his home. And so for those of us who are left behind, the word of Jesus there in John chapter 14, have more meaning, hopefully, than ever before. And here's what he says in John chapter 14 and verses 1 through 3 in the New International Version. You know it from the King James Version. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. So I go there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come back and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there, you will be also. For a lot of people, an occasion 
as our gathering like this is saying, it's really a time of mourning, it's a, it's a time of grieving. But for those of us who are believers, those of us who understand that the hope Jesus Christ offers, this is not a sad occasion, but it's really a point in time of celebration. The hope, beloved, and the assurance we have as Christians is anchored in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our hope is anchored in the promise of a loving Savior by the name of Jesus who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And whosoever believeth in me will never die. And then Jesus goes on there in John's gospel and he says, peace, I'm going to leave with you. My peace, he says, I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Amen. So do not let your hearts be troubled. And I wish that you not be afraid. The time, and this time, my beloved, together, is not a time filled with sadness. It was meant to be a time of remembrance, a time of joy, and a time of encouragement. Sure, there has been tears shed, but it's also been a time of embracing it's been a time of laughing. It's been a time of reliving fond memories with each other. And to some people, that may have seemed a little strange, but most of us seated in this room, we cling to the words of the Apostle Paul, who said, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who died, but to grieve like those who have no hope. Because of Jesus Christ, we can approach this transition in our lives with assurance, with confidence that only comes from knowing Jesus as our Savior and our Lord. You know, my beloved, my philosophy concerning funeral service has always been that the service is not for the one who has died but for those of us who are left behind there is nothing I could do nor you can do or any of us can do to bring any of our loved ones back however I can share a few words of encouragement and hope that that will hopefully make this difficult time a little bit easier for you. The scripture that I've chosen is one of my favorites, when it is a Christian who dies. And it's right there in the writings of Philippians, chapter 1, verses 20 through 23, where Paul writes, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which, my beloved, Paul says, Paul says is so much better more. As much as a Paul loves staying with his beloved, Paul had a great desire of being with Christ. Amen. 
So, my beloved, to live is Christ. Amen. And to die is gain. Allow me to remind you that <coughs> God did not take Brother Ephraim. He received him. As God doesn't take any of us when we transition, God receives us. And in that receiving, we live eternally in a life of relationship with him. You know, this life by which we have, my beloved, in which we live, kind of like a tent. And those of you, well, many of you probably never been in the military, but when I was in the military, we would go, we would go out, and when we would go out, we would um, bivouac, you know, we would pitch our tent. Well, this old body is kind of like a tent. Um, there are some people who can identify more of that of camping folk who enjoy camping with the tent because when you camp with the tent, that tent provides mobility for you to go to an area and just take it easy. But beloved, tents do not provide the comfort of your silly posturpedic mattress at home because sleeping in a sleeping bag will never be as comfortable as sleeping in your bed because as a tent is moved from place to place, season after season, the tent, you know, becomes worn and, and tattered. And Paul says this as we come to closing. The same is true of our earthly bodies. We travel through life apart from the comfort of our heavenly home and all of its comforts. And we grow weary at times We've grown through problems of illnesses and sickness. We sigh at times through sadness and sorrows. And when traveling, we desire to fold up the tent and go home. But lastly, I say to you, the cost of going to our heavenly home, you can't get there in the flesh. The cost of going to our heavenly home is a word called death. So, death is a promise. And the promise of death was given at the very beginning of humankind's journey in the Garden of Eden. But I remind you that death doesn't end here. And we ought to be glad about that on this morning. Death does not end here. It's only the beginning. And knowing that uh, it's only beginning is nothing but a nice little bridge that we use to get over to our heavenly home. I commend to you on this day the one who did not take Brother McKay, but the one who received him. He is the God of all comfort. He's comforted our mothers and our fathers, our sisters and our brothers and our loved ones. And guess what, my beloved? That same God of comfort will comfort each of you. The Lord bless you. And I admonish you to trust him. Amen. If I can help so Somebody at 
as I pass along. If I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show Somebody, he or she is traveling all wrong. Then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a good a good man art if I can bring bring back beauty to a world abroad I can spread, spread love's lovely message as the master taught, then my living shall not be in vain. Then am I, my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. I can help somebody as I pass, pass along, then my living, then your living, then I. When peace. And let me say this as we kind of to personalize this thing a little bit more. I've watched Sister Marie over the years with Brother Alfredo. I've watched her as she brought him to worship at Bethel on many, many occasions. And I've watched her as she has been a person of long suffering. Even when Brother Alfredo, not intentionally, but would do things he should not be doing, she was right there with a, a great sense of tenderness 
No, 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 no. I want to share with you today, my beloveds. Such may go unnoticed by others. Your kindness and your love to your beloved husband. But let me say this to you. It has not gone unnoticed by God. So, God, the grace of the good Lord be upon you. And not only you, but all of those persons that are in your bloodline. I thought it was so important that we share that. As I would go to the hospital, she would be right there, sleeping there as though she was lying on a sealed posturepedic mattress with all of the discomforts. She was there doing what God had petitioned in the covenant for us to do in sickness and in health. Amen.
I can give myself away. I can give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh God, I give myself. Here I am. Here I stand. Lord, my life is in your hands. Lord, I'm longing, I'm longing to see your desires revealed in me. I give myself away. If nothing else, we lift our hands and say that one thing. I can give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Tis all we can do, Father. I give myself away so you can use me. Now take my heart. Take my life as a living sacrifice. All my dreams, all my plans, Lord, I place them in your hands. I give myself away. Holy Father, I give myself away so you can use me. time to the Bethel AME Church family to their pastor, Reverend Dr. Richburg. We thank you for assisting us in serving the Mackey family of the day and giving those words of comfort. To those who took time out to be with this family, we thank you for your love and your support and acts of kindness. And in closing to the Mackey family, on behalf of the entire staff and management at Levy's Funeral Home and the entire Levy family, we thank you for entrusting your loved one into our care. We all know one of the hardest things in life is losing a loved one. But just know how blessed y'all was to have such a patriarch in your life. And we pray y'all cherish all the love and joy and wisdom of Mr. Mackey in the days to come. As we prepare to go to Fort Jackson for the final committal and military honors, um, there are rules and regulations that they have in place. Everyone entered to the cemetery must have a mask on. And they're only allowing 10 family members underneath the canopy and everyone else can stand around the perimeter as we have the final committal at Fort Jackson National Cemetery. Now for the recessional. Let us please stand, Israel. 